Hey everybody, this is Matt Shu from Upright Health and today I just wanted to talk a little bit more in detail about what I think goes on with people who have been um, diagnosed with femoral acetabular impingement. What I've seen is a lot of people say like, oh well you know the, the, the physiotherapy or the physical therapy PT that I've been doing for my hip impingement is not helping and I think that means, the conclusion is that that means there's nothing you can do about it that would make it feel better. I've also seen people say stuff like, oh, if I stretch, I can feel my labrum tearing, um, and I guess that means I shouldn't stretch. I don't believe that FAI is something that you can fix quickly by any stretch. Um, for me, dealing with my hip issues has taken a number of years, and uh, I have put in a lot of time and effort to make my hips feel better. Um, many people, I think in particular, I read one comment a while ago of a truck driver who said he has uh, FAI, major hip pain, and he doesn't know what to do about it. Um, I think people who are sitting a lot and can't do anything but sit a lot, like a truck driver, there's no way he can get a standing desk for his truck. Um, I think situations like those can be particularly difficult, like the, the probability of actually making that get better is very low because sitting basically kills the muscles you're trying to reawaken. So that's one, one, one issue. The second issue I, I think is very important to keep in mind is that you're not just dealing with issues of strength, right? So a lot of physical therapy things that I've seen have like lunges, they have squats, they have a little bit of deadlifting motions, trying to turn on the glutes and the hamstrings. Um, a lot of these exercises, when executed incorrectly, wake up the wrong muscles. In particular, thinking about things like forward lunges don't even work the glutes that much. Um, or wall sits are another one I've seen, or ball squats, those all do not work because they all tend to be quad dominant, which are muscles you don't want to wake up when you're dealing with FAI, in my opinion. Also, um, if you do like a good exercise like a squat, where you should be using your glutes, if you already lack the ability to activate the glutes, doing a squat will still be a quad dominant activity. It's generally a quad dominant activity, but if you can't even squeeze your glutes from a standing position or lying down and doing a bridge, then it's going to be completely impossible for you to get the squat to actually work your glutes. So, a lot of time uh, with people, a lot of the, the beginning stages of people that I've seen with FAI, what I've experienced personally, um, is that a lot of time you need to spend in the beginning working on, um, you have to spend a lot of time working on waking up motor control, like waking up your ability to even find your butt muscles and then start working on easier exercises to make those butt muscles fire first at all and then more strongly so that you can then carry that over into another exercise where you're again increasing the range of motion and trying to get a strong contraction of the appropriate posterior hip musculature. That is not an easy thing, it takes a lot of time and when you weigh that against the amount of time a lot of people sit, it becomes a real big struggle. The second idea that I mentioned at the begin beginning of this video was the idea of stretching and you feel your labrum tear. I saw this in particular related to somebody saying they were trying to stretch their inner thigh muscles. And they said when they stretch their inner thigh they could feel the labrum tearing. Um, what I've found is most people don't actually know where the labrum is and that's not to, I'm not trying to make fun of anybody. It's actually an important point to know the anatomy of what you're stretching when you're stretching so that you don't unnecessarily create fear in your own mind about what you're doing. The, the hip anatomy is actually pretty complex. You have 20 different muscles that wrap around this joint and affect the joint. And a lot of people can, you know, especially when they're in pain, they feel like they're doing damage. They're doing damage because not only is that you know, what it feels like, it feels like there's pain, there must be something bad happening, but also what you hear from the doctor is often if you feel pain there, it's because your bone is grinding away soft tissue. And that's not always the case. Um, if you spend a lot of time 
internally feeling what's going on and also cracking open an anatomy textbook to see where things um, actually attach. And actually, it can be very comforting knowing what muscles you might actually be stretching and how those relate to like the labrum or to you know the bones of the actual joint. Um, I've actually had a client tell me um, whenever he would flex his hip, he felt like he was pinching his labrum, and then he would point, he would point right here, which is right into the right at the groin here. I don't know how much you can see, um, but basically right in here. And he said, yeah, I can feel my labrum being pinched every time I flex my hip up like that. Well, that's, that's fine, right? It's an okay statement to say I, I feel pain there, but actually that's not, it's not your labrum, right? And, and I basically explained this to him and said, look, that's actually the attachment point for your adductors, right? So one of your adductor muscles attaches right here to your pelvic bone, and that's actually not where the labrum is. What's hurting there is not your labor, so you don't need to be concerned about that. None of this is to say that you're, uh, that you'll never feel pain from a labrum, although that is a little bit debatable since there are people who walk around with labral tears and have no idea that they have labral tears. But you should take some time to learn the anatomy, the muscular attachments so that you know when you stretch safely, when you stretch, that you know that you're stretching things safely. Thre stretching the inner thighs can be extremely threatening for many, many people. You feel like things are gonna rip apart, you feel like muscles are just being torn off the bone, uh, you can feel sharp stretching sensations. I believe it's probably because we spend most of our lives with our legs basically together, right? We, you sit like this, you very, very rarely are going to stand like this. You are pretty much never going to be doing, unless you're in martial arts, you're never doing anything with a big amount of extension. You're never doing anything where you're really twisted or torqued out. Most people in the modern world live in this position, so these muscles never have to learn to adapt to a stretch. Uh, I think, for at least for the guys, that's a huge problem when dealing with hip issues. For women, it's not always that. And often for women, it's more about the weakness back here. But for guys, I think it's a huge issue. Um, for some women I've seen, this can also be a huge issue as well. So the two big takeaways I would suggest are, um, number one, know that there are ways to do things correctly, that you need to work your muscles in the right way to make sure they do the right thing at the right time. And then number two is to facilitate, number one, is learn the anatomy so that you can start making progress in the right direction. I hope that helps you, and I hope that you remember that pain sucks. Life should.